This is Introduction to Mechanical Engineering and this is the 2017 to 18 exam question 7. Um, it's a set of seven true false questions and then we've got to calculate the Miller indices uh, for a specific plane at the end. So we'll go through the true false questions in order. Um, for some of these there's not really very much to write down so we'll just write in the question you were able to just say true or false. Um, Question 1A1 says a fine grain metal alloy will have lower yield strength than a coarse grain metal alloy of the same chemical composition. The, the grain boundaries stop dislocation movement. That's the key understanding here. Or they don't stop dislocation movement, they inhibit it. Um, and so the more grain boundaries you have, the harder it is for dislocations to move. And that means the harder it is for the material to yield and fine grained metals will have more grain boundaries so they'll have a higher yield strength so that question is false fine grains lead to higher yield strength uh, in part b the atomic number of magnesium is 12. this looks like kind of a complicated question because we've got to work out exactly what orbitals these electrons should be in and things like that but actually we know that there ought to be 12 electrons if the atomic number of something is 12 um, and in fact there are these these superscript numbers here are the, the electrons there are 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 1 which is only 11 electrons so that is false the number of electrons doesn't match the atomic number so it can't be true um, for part C, we're just going to need to do a bit of calculation. Um, the thing that's important here, percentage cold work equals uh, change in area. Sorry, my deltas look a bit like my um, A's. Divided by the initial area. Um, and express that as a percentage so we can multiply that by a hundred um, that equals well we're told in the question the diameter has gone from 15 to 13 uh, I'll do everything in square millimeters here it'll work just the same so that's pi times 15 on 2 squared minus the second area 13 on 2 squared all over the initial area pi times 15 on 2 squared multiply all of that by 100 um, and when I put that into my calculator I can cancel out all of the pi's and all of the divided by twos um, and I'll get 15 squared minus 13 squared divided by 15 squared um, I get 24.9 percent you don't have to do any of that cancelling out. You can work all of this through just using the numbers you've got there. Um, but that's not equal to 13.3% uh, which we're given. So this is false. Just make a note of that right here at the start. That doesn't work. Okay. Uh, D or part four whatever um, the fracture toughness of a material measures the resistance of the material to fracture um, well that's just true that is what the fracture toughness is measuring so you just need to know that um, the tensile strength and yield strength decrease with increasing crystallinity of polypropylene now, this is a bit like in question a the crystallinity sorry in the first part of the question um, because the crystallinity, higher crystallinity leads to harder, stiffer and less ductile materials um, and so that means essentially the tensile and yield strength are increasing with crystallinity so that is false. Um, A6, adding metal oxides such as sodium oxide and calcium oxide to commercial soda line glass can change the softening temperature and viscosity of the glass that's just true that's straight out of the lecture notes and finally the molecular weight of nylon 66 is 226 the number average molecular weight is 56 500 therefore the degree of polymerization is 250 well 
um, let's just do this the monomer weight multiplied by the degree of polymerization equals the molecular weight or the um, the number average molecular weight as it is in the question so here the degree of polymerization equals the molecular weight divided by the monomer weight which equals 56500 divided by 226 and that comes out as 250 which is what's suggested in the question so that is true so the answers are in order false 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 true false true true and that's seven marks for those um, if we just look quickly at part B here um, this is asking about the following Miller index um, for Miller indices I'll start by drawing the, cu the unit cube start by drawing a square turn it into a cube something like that um, now what I can do is to draw on my origin I'm going to put my origin here that's fine and I can draw on my axes uh, that's Z that is Y and that is X and the plane itself goes through this point, this point, this point, and this point. And I think I've said in class one of the things that can be difficult about these Miller index problems is working out, uh, observing where the plane is, but that's the the image that I want. I don't know if it's going to help if I shade my plane, probably not, I'm just going to stick with that. Um, now what we need to do is write down the x-intercept where does the plane cut the x-axis well it's this point here which is on the unit cube so that is at the point one units the point of the unit cube is that its dimensions are one along every axis so this point here which is the x-intercept is at one the y-intercept go along the y-axis until I hit this green plane and again that happens at 1, it happens on the unit cube the z-intercept well this is a vertical plane in this context so I can keep going along the z-axis positive or negative forever and I'll never hit the, um, the, the green plane it runs parallel to the z-axis so I can sort of say that's at infinity for this context um, and then we invert these for the Miller index so the Miller index is 1 over 1 1 over 1 1 over infinity which equals 1 1 0 which equals D and that's the answer so you know if you are answering a Miller index question in the exam I would recommend taking a bit of time about it drawing out the unit cube writing down what your X Y and Z intercepts are and then finally um, inverting those to get your Miller index and do remember that negative numbers in Miller indices are um, expressed with a bar over the top of the number um, so that is question seven there were seven marks for the true or false questions here and there were three marks for getting the correct Miller index